started. Welcome everyone to morning prayer today. Lovely to see you. Let's make a start. Um, o oh Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O oh God, you are my God. Eagerly I seek you. My soul is a thirst for you. My flesh also faints for you as in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So would I gaze upon you in your holy place that I might behold your power and your glory. Your loving kindness is better than life itself. And so my lips shall praise you. I will bless you as long as I live and lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night, for you have been my helper and under the shadow of your wings will I rejoice. My soul clings to you. Your right hand shall hold me fast. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. Um, Psalm 76. Elizabeth, would you like to do the even verses? Yeah, okay. Okay. In Judah, God is known. His name is great in Israel. At Salem is his tabernacle and his dwelling place in Zion. There broke he the flashing arrows of the bow, the shield, the sword, and the weapons of war. In the light of splendor you appeared, glorious from the eternal mountains. The boastful were plundered, they have slept their sleep. None of the warriors can lift their hand. At your rebuke, O God of Jacob, both horse and chariot fell stunned. Terrible are you in majesty who can stand before your face when you are angry. You caused your judgment to be heard from heaven. The earth trembled and was still. And God arose to judgment to save all the meek upon earth. You crushed the wrath of the peoples and bridled the wrathful remnant. Make a vow to the Lord your God and keep it. Let all who are round about him bring gifts to him that is worthy to be feared. He breaks down the spirit of princes and strikes terror in the kings of the earth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. So, uh, yeah. I kind of want picture there of God's wrath, really, um, which I think we should remember and respect, really, that we have a God of justice who doesn't um, overlook injustice, yeah? Mm. And that's something, yeah. that's a good thing. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. <clears throat> God okay. cares about justice. Yeah, yeah. And so should we. Yes, absolutely. Really important. All right. So, um, Leslie, do you want to read our first reading? Yes. Um, to Samuel. Yes. After this, David inquired of the Lord. Shall I go up into any of the cities of Judah? The Lord said to him, Go up. David said, To which shall I go up? He said, To Hebron. So David went up there along with his two wives, Ahinoam of Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal of Carmel. David brought up the men who were with him, every one with his household, and they settled in the towns of Hebron. Then the people of Judah came, 
and there they anointed David king over the house of Judah. When they told David it was the people of Jabesh Gilead who buried Saul, David sent messengers to the people of Jabesh Gilead and said to them, May you be blessed by the Lord because you showed this loyalty to Saul, your Lord, and buried him. Now may the Lord show steadfast love and faithfulness to you. And I too will reward you because you have done this thing. Therefore, let your hands be strong and be valiant. For Saul, your Lord, is dead and the house of Judah has anointed me king over them. But Abner, son of Ner, commander of Saul's army, had taken Ishbal, son of Saul, and brought him over to Mahanaim. He made him king over Gilead, the Asherites, Jezreel, Ephraim, Benjamin, and over all Israel. Ishbal, Saul's son, was 40 years old when he began to reign over Israel, and he reigned for two years. But the house of Judah followed David. The time that David was king in Hebron over the house of Judah was seven years and six months. Okay, great. So um, Saul's died and yeah, there's a, a vacancy on the throne. Um, David, we remember, was anointed by Samuel to be king, but he's not, re he's not the bloodline of Saul. Um, so he goes and he's established king in Judah, but he has um, Saul's son um, is reigning alongside him. We think of like the, the United Kingdom of Israel through the time of Saul, David and Solomon. But there is this little period before David establishes himself over all Israel. Uh, where he has Saul's son reigning over part of the territory. Yeah. yeah, it's not a good situation really, is it? You know, the country's divided and when they're divided, they're weak. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and, you know, people would have expected Saul's son to inherit the throne, yeah? Yeah. I guess, yeah. I suppose so they would, although Saul was the first king and had they established how they were going to appoint kings and... Uh... Probably not, but on the other hand, I think in ancient times it was all dynastic, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, probably, so yeah. That would have been the tradition of, you know, peoples around them. Mm. So, well, what will happen next? We'll see. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So, Gary, do you want to read the passage from Acts? Oh, yes. Okay, thank you. When they had brought them, they had them stand before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name. <clears throat> Yet here you are, you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and you are determined to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, we must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and saviour so that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to the th these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them. <clears throat> but a Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, respected by all the people, stood up, and ordered the men to be put outside for a short time. Then he said to them, fellow Israelites, consider carefully what you propose to do to these men. For some time ago, Theudas rose up claiming to be somebody and a number of men, about 400, joined him. 
but he was killed and all who followed him were dispersed and disappeared. After him, Judas the Galilean rose up at the time of the census and got people to follow him. He also perished and all who followed him were scattered. So in the present case, I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone because if this plan or this undertaking is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be, over, be able to overthrow them. In that case, you may even be found fighting against God. They were convinced of him, and when they had called in the apostles, they had them flogged. Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. As they left the council, they rejoiced that they were considered worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of his name. And every day in the temple and at home, they did not cease to teach and proclaim Jesus as the Messiah. Great, okay, thank you, Gary. Um, so we have a bold witness by the apostles. Um, and um, this, interesting speech by the Pharisee Gamal Gamaliel, Gamaliel. Um, it's the Gam who was the, Paul says he was brought up at the feet of a Pharisee, was that Gamaliel or was that? Yes, it was, yeah. The same man, do you think? I, I think, yeah, very um, possibly. I mean, he was, a, he was obviously a scholar. Yeah, he's probably an older man. I mean, because, yeah. because Paul, was own was still quite young himself he's a, yes yeah exactly contemporary to jesus yeah so mm. maybe he's not even out of his 30s at this time paul yeah. um i think so yeah so, yeah but so so maybe he maybe this man is in his 60s or 70s or something yeah mm. but, yeah i yeah. think so quite possible isn't it might be the same person mm. Mm. yeah i wouldn't be at all surprised i i sort of always assumed it was yeah really um, and paul speak i mean obviously paul respected him greatly didn't he so yeah, it's, it's a very interesting situation because at this point paul is saul and persecuting the christians yes um but Gamaliel is um is just saying be a bit cautious here. Mm. Yeah. It's a very challenging passage, isn't it? You know, we feel embarrassed and so on. They've just been flogged and all did not to speak. <clears throat> and instead of feeling embarrassed or oh let's keep quiet and not cause trouble, they're they're pleased that they were counted worthy to suffer. And they completely ignore the instructions and carry on teaching mm. in Jesus' name. Mm. Uh, there must have been, I always think there must have been somebody around um, who, like when Peter was um, at the trial of Jesus, there was somebody, must have told what uh, Gamaliel said to somebody yeah. in the sense of this bit about um, if, it, if it's just a human thing it'll all fade away like all these yeah. other people but if it's of God then we better leave it alone because we yes. need fighting against God mm -hmm. yeah 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 it's um it's interesting because this, this Luke must have ferreted out something from someone yeah. about that. Yeah. yeah. It shows so much sort of tact and wisdom by Gamaliel, but actually still not coming off the fence and wholeheartedly recognizing who Jesus No. You know, it's uh it's sort of commendable, but it's a bit sad in a way that he himself seems to <laughs> yes. stay on the fence, as it were, yeah? Mm. 
And it's a bit like people were with Jesus. They didn't want blood on their hands. Yeah. I mean, I know they yeah. did have it in the end, but they tried to sort of shrug it off and get rid of it. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I suppose it was political on his part. The people obviously liked these guys and what was happening, what they were saying and what they were doing. Mm. And uh, to do something, sort of execute them, shut them up, whatever, would have been an unpopular move. So there was a sort of political aspect to it as well, you know, let, let it peter out. Yeah. It will, but if it's of God, it won't. Um, and maybe it's the mind of a scholar as well saying, um, I want to know more about this. Yeah. He's hedging his bets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, could be, yes. To Peter. Because we've got to think there was Nicodemus who was one of them. He, he, he more than likely had said something to these people. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, he, he because he was one of those who helped. Man. Yeah, he helped take the body of Jesus and lay it in a tomb, yeah, which yeah. was which was a very brave thing for him to do. Yes, yeah. but that was pinning colours to the mast, wasn't it? Really? Yeah, where he'd been quite ambivalent at the beginning of John's Gospel. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, he was thrown by what Jesus said to him, wasn't he? Um, uh, but he comes out at the end. He does. Mm. He does. But, yeah. But Simon, but Peter and the apostles, they are, they're fantastic, aren't they? Okay, sorry, we, we obey God, not you. Yeah. Uh, whoever you are. To see the change in them, uh, having been empowered by the Holy Spirit, to how they were, you know, around the time of the crucifixion, yeah? Yeah. They just, like, seem like different people, yeah? Um, yeah, they do. Um, and they are, really, aren't they? They've been changed. Yeah. Great. All right. Well, it's great to read this, isn't it? I sometimes think that, you know, people think of the early church a bit like, you know, church here, people pottering about, you know, you know, giving sermons and things. But I mean, it was actually a fierce context in which, you know, there was terrifying persecution. And, um, you know, people, they were so courageous. They were. Tom Wright, the theologian, said he sometimes, because he's written books about St Paul, he sometimes goes to churches and talks about St Paul and he said, and afterwards people have coffee and biscuits, he said St Paul would go to somewhere and preach and teach and afterwards there was a riot. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, it is. Yeah, it is. It was fierce. It was fierce and it was dangerous and you know and there were men and women who were very bravely um putting themselves out there on the front line yeah uh, i was thinking about it the other day i mean you know it's all it does say it's all rounded up men and women to imprison them so mm. these women must have been quite active in you know whatever it was they were doing too to mm. for it to be necessary to get rid of them. Um, I mean, they were incredibly courageous. Yeah. All of them. But then there are people even today in some parts of China and, uh, um, and Asian countries where Christianity yeah. is not looked upon as, as um, so benevolently as it is here. Indeed. Indeed. Christians are the most... Courageous too. Yeah. It's, well, yeah. We'll pray for Christians that. are the most persecuted religion. Christianity is the most persecuted religion in the world, still. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's say our responsory and then we'll pray. Um, your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. 
that glory, that glory may be dwell in our land. To the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Your salvation, salvation is near to those who fear you. That glory may dwell in our land. Okay, so let's pray. Um, Lord, uh, do pray for our church, for St. Michael's, um, and for all churches in this country and around the world. And Lord, we recognize that we um, have so much peace and security uh, and comfort as Christians in this country. We may feel frustrated that sometimes we're mocked for our faith and not taken seriously and even offended, but um, we do remember our brothers and sisters in other parts of the world who, um, who risk their lives and certainly risk um, all kinds of suffering for their faith. Uh, we ask, Lord, for courage and protection for them. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And Lord, I want to raise to you those who've asked for prayer by name. Uh, for Nike Adesarkin Olyinka, George Georgiou, Christopher Golis, Vivian Golis, Pete Jadhav, David Kimpton, Anna Lee, Noel Morrison, Linda Woods, Martha and Ezra Prescott, and all the children at Hope Primary School in Bulawayo, and the friends and family of Morris Fitzgerald. Lord, um, thank you that you love us and you are with us in times of trouble. Please, Lord, in the power of your spirit, bring healing to all those who suffer. In Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord, I lift you as well for healing and for help. Those to whom I have spoken in the past days who do not want their names to be made public and put on our prayer list. Help them to understand that they are just as precious, just as much your children, just as loved. Bring comfort to them and strength, Lord. I also pass on the thanks that have been phoned to me and help those people to know that their prayers direct to you are every bit as precious as important as when they pass through me or through anyone else's hands. For we are all your children, Lord. There is no closer tie than this. And I thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Lord, I ask you to pray for, I ask for prayer for my cousin Ian, mm. Ian Winter, who undergo, undergo, has undergone tests and goes for the results of them on Monday. Be with him, Lord, and give him courage and strength for whatever the results may be. Mm. Amen. 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 Let your merciful ears, O Lord, be open to the prayers of your humble servants, that they may obtain their petitions and make them to ask such things as shall please you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Using the contemporary version of the Lord's Prayer as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. We 
forgive as we forgive those who sin against us. not in the temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Who bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Amen. 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 Amen.